Welcome to Insight Africa, another exciting episode ahead. We're here in Nizna at Judah Square, which is the home of the largest Rasta community in Africa. I'm going to hand you over to James and he's going to take you through all the exciting cultures about the Rasta people. Please tell us about the House of Judah. Yeah, House of Judah, very interesting because it starts way back. I can say it became mature or an adult because we was established in 1993, the 4th of April. And it actually came out of protest. You know, we used to see ourselves as the nice narastas. Because that time we used to believe our ah, Rasta is not organized and everything dealing with organization or registration is Babylon. Oh. But yes, that's how it came about. We start to try to be self-sufficient, like establish small fruit and veg stalls. Oh. And okay. like, yeah, first it was not like now, maybe earlier you saw in town is very busy, yes. but it was not. Like that. The, uh, like that in the yeah. beginning. We oh. start out small with one box of so Brother Chabu, some of the other elders, the oh. one who was here this morning, China. China, And yeah. like buy one packet of maybe orange that we divide it amongst the four or five of us, one, uh, how can I say, box of banana, divide it amongst them. Same with the uh, uh, apple, so obviously each one have a little in his small box and there we go. Oh. Yeah, but anyhow, then we find some trouble with uh, the that time local government because of us. Oh, you're not allowed because when you're selling fruits, where's your proof as this is, you see, fine and what, <laughs> you what. You really face a lot. Yeah. Been a rust of and then we said, no, but we generally sell to our people and the ones that know us, we don't bother those that don't want to sell. And they said, no. And then that first day, they came out with a police oh. and they told us to set vacate here because we were standing close to a bus stop where we thought, okay, the people come from a bus and okay. yeah. And then with all the stall things, we find out that some of the people in the municipality were sympathetic with us. They said, no man, there is ways if you can mobilize the people, if the people support you with your ideas, this government or the one that is about to come is about democracy. Mm. It's the people's will. So if you think that the people support you with this idea of you Rastas doing your own thing, sustain yourself, that time we wasn't there. Then we went to a first place, then we went back, they said, no, sorry, mm. in time there will be a clinic, which okay. they did. Okay. Then there was a nice one on top with a nice view. Then they said, no, there will be some churches and schools already on their plans. Oh. So it's out. So then we end up here. Mm -hmm. We end up here and here it was already like infrastructure, like roads. Yeah. So their intention was to build houses and then we said, can't we occupy this because it's still vacant, there's no houses. Okay. You have the infrastructure here. So then they started, said, okay, good, come up with your names and what, what, all the details so that we can register the plots in your name. Mm. So that time you have still a lot of brothers that was feeling, oh, there's Babylon, and we're the old traditional mm. way, away with ideas. And then we said, no, but if we take that stand, we will never end up having land. Oh. So some of us, which was a few, me and some of the elders, were still young that time, we took it up on ourselves and collect those that support. Mm. Collect ideas, take it forward to them. And then they said, okay, and they allocate plots. So the idea was to have all those spaces, because all over there was no houses. Okay. To have a big community, that was the vision. Yeah. But then not enough support from our own Rasta brothers because of the different opinions. Oh. It ended up that we have this. And yes, then we carry on like this. It was still like wooden shacks and what what and we do our own thing. But then tourists also start to hear and because of our ganja, the mm. fights with the police mm. was more like eyes on us and attention. Mm -hmm. okay. And yes, the house of Judah start off of as 
tribes because okay. when we became Rastas we first know about 12 tribes mm. which means the 12 sons of Jacob, Joseph, oh. mm -hmm. Reuben, mm -hmm. Naphtali, mm -hmm. Joseph, mm -hmm. cut all those oh. and each one is born in a different month. Oh. So obviously your month uh, actually tells you in which tribe you are. I'm very proud to be a Rastafarian, yes, and it was from birth. Uh, my mom wasn't born Rastafarian, my mom and dad. Um, they, when they moved here, they uh, began the movement, Dutam and Maxi, you know, traveling over, the, uh, over South Africa, recuperating people to start this movement. And yeah, I'm so blessed and proud actually to be part of it. I can't see myself in any other way of life or culture or whatever. So yeah, very proud to be a Rastafarian. Far back in history, then you see the the Battle of Atwa. Okay. Uh, in the 1800s, it was in 1892 when Elsa Lassie was a babe. So then the Italians was come to Ethiopia and the Empress uncle was the Emperor of Ethiopia and they were ancient warriors and they defeat the Italians. Mm. That's why we as Rastans believe it was a revenge of Benito Mussolini okay. coming in 1935 to Ethiopia and causes that invasion there oh. whereby the Emperor was Emperor at the time and moved to to Britain, oh. which they say it was the saddest day of his life, but a loving dog is better than a dead lion. Oh. Rastafari. Rastafari. So he's the son of, of McKinnon, oh. his father, and his father uh, died when he was nine years old, oh. and that's why he became the counselor, you see, because he also reminds us of the connection of Christianity with Ethiopia mm. in the times of the Bible, in the New Testament, in the, books, in the book of Acts. So there Peter say that the Ethiopian man from Kadesa was there, he sat with the scripture, he read out of the Bible about the lamb that was slaughtered. And then Philippus asked him, do you know what you read? Mm. Then he say, how would I know if nobody told me? Mm. And then he, he revealed, like I reveal now unto you, all the scriptures from Moses unto the day of Christ. And so that Ethiopian saw the light and he let him baptized and he went back to Kadesa in Ethiopia. Oh. So that is the connection that Ethiopia got with Christianity. Oh. So the Rasta man is actually a true Christian oh. following the Bible. Oh, that's Rastafari. That's Sir, tell me, uh, for someone to become I a, a policy driver, uh, for someone to become a Rastafarian, uh, Rastafari. Does it, Rastafari, sorry for, yeah. does it mean that person must have a dread? That's how it starts off, is to identify ourselves with the African way of life. life. But then it became so crucial in Jamaica mm -hmm. that they make laws to say every dreadlocks Cut them, shave them, put them in prison, and somewhat became like <laughs> they rather shave, but they keep it inside. So from there on, it becomes like an inborn conception. Mm -hmm. It's not like the way how you look, because nowadays you have a lot of people that look like this, but yeah, then okay. you find them, they rob, mm -hmm. yeah. they rape, mm -hmm. they do this and that, and for us, and that's very important. That's mm -hmm. why a lot of people say, ah, but Rasta is just like any others. No, mm. so that's the thing, there's a lot of dreadlocks mm -hmm. and there's also true Rastas mm -hmm. and to be a true Rasta is mm -hmm. firstly to accept 
the divinity of Haile Selassie because oh. that's the start point oh. and from there we can dig in deeper but if you said no that so leave that interview it's a personal opinion it's oh. not Rasta okay. and that's what make it so tight and tough okay uh, uh, service gate in skills recommend skills gate so and that's the importance of okay. it you see okay so that's the importance of it but anyhow I did my brother you must make that time, man. Holy Selassie. Ah, Holy Selassie. Okay, uh, what have you got to tell us more about uh, the house of Judah, the culture, the arts and crafts? Is there anything you want to show us? Yeah, let me take you in. I'm fly. Airy, airy, airy. There are some elders in the community, yeah. but uh, Winston is the one on our music side. Yeah. He's the one in charge with the bigger band. Okay. As you was here, that uh, Nikki, the, 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 uh, Nico, I was said he was also part of uh, the reggae ambassador, so the I is in charge of the reggae oh, ambassador. Right. Yeah, and as you see, this is mostly like old pictures of us. The very same man there, Jabu, this one, mm -hmm. this is him. Oh. Very young. <laughs> this is me. Oh! Yeah. The other brother this morning with the herbs. Yeah. Himself, this is him. Okay. That was in the 80s. You were still very young Rastas. <laughs> young boys. But anyhow, there you can see the difference look like yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's yeah. Yeah. It is telling. This is an uh, elder from Jamaica. He visited us 2000, no, 1997. He was the Nayabingi high priest. Okay. So he came all the way and they also heard about us and he was here to come and sanctify our young Rastas. Okay. And for us it was a big honor because all the world, Jamaica, Jamaica, now one of the elder elders from Jamaica came out to Naisna, stay with us, be with us and shows us a lot of, especially the Nayabingi and that's where the Nayabingi was being okay. established amongst us. Yeah, but here me and him was in a conference of conservation because I'm very much also involved in conservation, alien clearing. That's my part of project. Some is in the music, some selling herbs, the fruits, mm -hmm. the brothers. This is mostly arts from our local people. Mm -hmm. And besides that also we have like outside people also, we use this also as a display. Mm. You might have like for instance this is it's not a rasta. Somebody was just idea. We said, okay, bring it. Let's put it. There's an elephant, there's a baboon, there's a lizard, and a lot of tourists, they already bought some of this because for them it's like, hey, from nothing, there's a something. It's not like the usual art, like hard carving, just simple something. Sustainability, our own way of how we think we can conserve. Our version. Hmm. Yeah, man. Since then, when I grow up, I know experience uh, Rasta, uh, way of Rasta, even here nice. Okay, you come later, mm, uh, 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 nine, 98, in that time, you say, okay, in that time when Rasta come up and rise up, even nice now, and me was so very ill. Got out and say, I found the rest in that way. And I found now is for me, trust them to live even that life, you see, to come out of, of, of you see, to do crucial things. When the things come back to me, then I, I feel no, it's not, I cannot carry it, you see. So when I can do that good things and the good things come back to me, so then I gonna be rejoiced, you see. That's a way I come in in the rest of life. And then we are. Well, very, maybe so seven, eight, ten people here around Naisna and start to live even that way and take the, the scroll, the Bible, and read the Bible and to be, you see, be, be honest on yourself. And that brother's eye, that I went with him here, I'm in Mexico also, he was in school in that time more encourage each other in this life and search for more even in this way of life, you see. And then we grow up, you see, as a bigger community and then we stick on that, you see, until we, until now, you see, for us and we can also establish ourselves even here as a community mm -hmm. and today we deal with those people outside, you see. And you also add towards promoting 
Yes. Rastafari. Yeah. Because there's a lot of, lot of misconceptions here. Yeah. Rastafari is it's not criminality. Dope, yeah. Smoking dope and mm -hmm. all that. It's much more than that. Yeah. And that's the important part. We well, need to know that Rastafari is the way forward. Mm. Because everyone is stuck in now. Religions is mm. making wars. Mm. Businesses is collapsing. Mm. Leaders is misleading. Mm. So the world is looking for true leader. Mm. So revelation is in operation. Yes. It means the Bible is in completion because revelation is the last book. It's the last book in the Bible. So the Bible is close. Yeah. Yeah, and you know reggae is a Latin word reggae. Reggae. It means to the king. To the king? Yeah. Yeah, but generally that's what reggae means. Okay. Yeah, not to a certain king, but to the king. Mm. Uh, uh, the Rastas, they don't eat meat. Okay. Yeah, why? We don't want to kill yes. to survive. Love your neighbors, you love yourself. You see, the animal, the plant, it's our neighbors. This is my sister, you my brother. No matter what nation, we brothers and sisters, yeah. universally, uh. as the human race, okay. it's our neighbors. Okay. As the human race, it must be the plants and the animals. Yeah. One of the commandments, you must love your neighbor as you love yourself. Yeah. So yes. the plant is our That's... neighbors. Oh. The animals is our neighbors, so why oh. shall we kill them? Yeah. You see? You can make better use of them, the sheep give you wool, you can make yourself nice clothing, the horse can take you over distances, and that's what transport you, so there's different purposes, not to kill them, to eat them. This one you see is corn, yeah. then you get the mushroom, okay. you get the potato, okay. the carrots, okay. and there you got some soya chunks, okay. Yeah, and then underneath the one you can't see is like green pepper, red pepper, yellow pepper, oh. and some red onion, oh. white onion, yeah. and then we have the brinzel also. It's a combination of it's a combination. Uh, the, the Only veg. veggies. Only veg. Uh, yeah. Colors, That's yeah. And then we're still going to have some of these... Uh, Butter beans. Butter beans, oh, yes, oh okay. Oh, yeah, that's some lovely. of the butter beans, yeah. What's this, I wish? Yes, my brother. Put the keep on boiling while love will burn him through the night. Kitani's known for it, the good pot. This has been an exciting episode so far and I'm looking forward to the rest of the exciting episode. We are going to take us through the Rasta community learnings with a group of school children. I'm handing back over to her. Please keep watching. King Rastafari. Yes, I am Sister Kerry, and I was actually born in Australia and raised there. I um, spent the first 15 years of my life and uh, left school, travelled at an early age, hitchhiked around Australia, travelled 54 countries in 25 years, and I ended up here in South Africa in 1983. I sailed over on a yacht. And when I put my foot on the soil, I just knew I was home. Um, I came to know Rastafari when I was in London in 1977. Um, just li listening to Bob Marley's music, I got the message of Rastafari. And uh, I was listening to the lyrics and thinking, oh, they lyrics of the Bible. And I grew up in the uh, Christian church, in the Catholic church, actually. And I was always attracted to that spiritual side of life from a very early age. And I knew the Bible, so it, it, um, it took me. And so I started listening more to Bob Marley music and reggae music. 
and I actually went to see Bob Marley in a concert in Wales and ended up backstage with um, with Bob Marley and the Wailers and that was an inspiration for me in Rastafari and not long after I went to Barbados and when I was in Barbados I met Rastas there and um, the first night there actually I was looking for ganja and I went to a dance hall and I asked a brother to take me uh, to get some ganja for me so he took me to another brother and I ended up in the little beach hut with his family and they reasoned about Rasta all night and I said for I it was like that rebirth, you know, and I knew this was my past. So from that time in 1977 uh, yeah, it, it was, yeah. Mm. Um, had 1977 been to school and one was a slow learner in my class who um, whose parents couldn't afford to go and live in Kingston, so we were in a little place called Port Antonio. And um, so I had all the different age groups to deal with, and I'd never like really taught before. I was self-taught teacher, <laughs> but um, it was a challenge, and but I, I really loved it very much. And so when I decided to come back to South Africa. Um, I just, my whole mission was to do the same thing here in South Africa, was to educate the youth, you know, and especially to give them Rasta teachings and to give them like life skills, you know, and things that they don't learn at school, black history and uh, the Maric language, all the things of Ethiopia, because that's where our teachings come from, from King Selassie. Um, yeah, so now I've been here in Judah Square for 19 years this year and um, I could write a book on my adventures here <laughs> uh, because yeah, I've learned very much and I just say community life is really the way to live. Um, when I was living in Australia with my Rasta sisters, we used to, our youths were all small and we used to like dream of this, exactly. You know, we'd say how amazing it would be if we could all live in a Rasta community in Africa and raise our children and do things together. So, yeah, that dream has been fulfilled for I. Um, it's the biggest blessing to be here, really. In Revelation, in the, the book of Revelation, in the Bible, Revelation 19, verse 16, it says, And I saw an angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worth to open the book and loose the seal thereof? And no man in heaven, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, and one of the elders said unto I, Weep not. Behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, had prevailed to open the book and to loose the seal thereof. Heather. Yes, sir. Uh, tell us something about yeah. uh, Rastafarian uh, Abba. Yeah, Rastafarian is here to heal the people. You see the people here in South Africa, they are very sick and so need the natural herbs. Not only the herbs from the doctor or from the chemist, they will need the herbs come from the mountains, from out of the ground, out of the forest. Like this one is buhu. It's good for chest problems, it's good for the kidneys. This one is the red carrot. Red carrot. Uh, and this one is for wash. Some of the herbs are for washing herbs, some are for drinking, okay. some are for burning like incense. Okay. Yeah, for like to say this one is white storm. Oh. In Kosa they call it slow, slow, yeah. And for how long have you been in this? Oh, i am been more than 10 years in this long time I'm in this. And here we from Naisna, I'm one of the eldest doctor here in Naisna. I'm the member of the House of Judah, I'm Rash Blaze. Some call me, I'm in China. <laughs> yes. And I'm the bush doctor here, and I'm also the... You are Chinese. Yeah. And I'm also the eldest one, I'm now 57. And I'm 40 years, I'm Rastafarian. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. My children, is, I got nine children. They all born are in Rasta. And they all alive. 
they all strong. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, now this herb is herb from Africa, you see. It yields up very powerful. Like I'm saying, some come from the mountain, some come from the river, like this one, Red Terrace. It's good for high blood pressure. Oh. Yeah, and also for the kidneys. People drink it even to clean them from. Then I make that mixes. That's why the bottle is so red. It's a red carrot to make it so red. Yeah. So we are lots of doctors here. You see, nice, nice a place of the nature. And yeah, we go and fetch all the herbs. Yeah, so every people, they come in here for their herbs. Most poor people, they come in here, they believe in the nature. Yeah, yeah, and the herb is for every sheep. There is a herb, you see. Yeah, could be you, like I'm saying, some you burn as a burning sacrifice, clean the house, chase the duckies and everything in the house, you see. And some of them you clean yourself with, and others you can throw it around the house. This traditional Ila business, South African traditional Ila business, uh, does it have a traditional uh, procedure to become a member or to join? Yeah, um, like I'm saying, as we as Rastafarians, um, it's like it is part of our culture, herbs. Oh. Yeah. Since we became Rasta, you drink herbs and you work with herbs. Some of us, we smoke herbs even. Yeah, <laughs> so that is a healthy culture. We most deal with herbs. That's you see, it. even in our That's food, amazing. in our food, we also throw herbs. Herbs. Yeah. Everything is herb. Rastafaria is herb. Yeah, it's healthiness. <laughs> yeah, That's it's so healthiness. That's why you guys are healthy. Yes, yes. So, they, I can see. Yeah. You are healthy. And even your kids are healthy. Yeah, they are, they are healthy. They are healthy and strong. Yeah. Like I'm saying, all of nine of them, they are alive, you see, none of them is sick, you see, because me, myself, when I make the herb, I usually drink a cup because I make the herb, yeah. So How many times do you take the herbs? When you yeah, I'm usually drinking in the morning because in the morning your belly is clean, the blood is clean, okay. so it's the best time to drink herb. Okay. When you go to bed and when you wake up is the time when oh. you drink the herb. Oh, okay. Yeah, don't worry, during the day we will work or you talk, but when you sleep and when you wake up, it's a time when the herb, oh. yeah, that is a time when the herb work also, when you drink it the right time. Okay. <laughs> Zebulon, uh, we've been here since yesterday, and today is another day. Uh, tell us, Ellen Demon will be here in drumming at yes, 6 o'clock. Yes, sir. So, what has been happening here? Uh, yes, my brother, man. welcome to Judah Square. I am Rasta Afrikaner, we all known as Brother Zebulon. I'm very humbled and honored to welcome you to our community and to share some more information yes my brother what we are doing here in the morning is like we are members of the Nayabingi order which is an international okay. movement and now after we have learned from the elders we are the four persons of the Nayabingi order and yes my brother up to today, we are still practicing, and this is the footprints, the legacy, the liberty of His Divine Majesty, mm. Emperor Yeri Aishalasya the first. Yeah, for us, it's now normal to open our day every morning, you know, and say, but it's not compulsory, senior woman, because it's, 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 everyone won't be here, you know, and say, but we are still uh, encouraging once and once, we are still inviting and welcome once, you know, and say, because it's to strengthen the INSI, you know, the assaults and the army. Yes, 
Rastafari, in my interpretation, it's not a, a, a religion. It's 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 a way of liberty, you know what I'm saying? Because religion is very sensitive now, you see, because it's like the way things are maneuvering, you know what I'm saying? So the substance, the purpose, you know what I'm saying? It's no more so authentic, you know what I'm saying? But with Rastafari, it's a piece of that, and it's a piece of that, you know what I'm saying? It is very orthodox, you know what I'm saying? Even just to give you an uh, introduction, even the dreadlocks, you know what I'm saying? It's very significant, you know what I'm saying? Because it is identifying I and I with the biblical story, which gives more substance and strength. Because there's even a psalm in the Bible, I think it's 133, and like Aaron's beard went down to the skirts of his garment, you know what I'm saying? So yes, even with the Taurus, we give him just more clarity, you know what I'm saying, to overstand and not to understand. Hmm. If things so, that is I and I purpose. Oh. Give <laughs> Just taken out of the cross, you know. You see Jesus there, you know. We say, Forgive them, Father, for they don't know what they're doing, you know. And it was daytime, but all of a sudden, you can see, turned into dark, you know. And for we, Jesus is a Nazarite, you know. Hmm. So, on the vow of Nazarenes, they never used to shave their, their yes. beard or cut their hair, hmm. you know. So, for we Rastas, we believe. Jesus Christ is a Nazarite, and the vows of the Nazarenes, hmm. they never used to cut their hair. Hmm. So this is a true reflection of Jesus. So we don't know other Jesus, you know, which are brought to us in Africa, which they are white people, you know. <laughs> because for we know, Jesus is a black man, you know. Hmm. He's a Nazarite. He's an Ethiopian. Hmm. You know, that is where he was born. He was born in the Holy Land. In Ethiopia. In Ethiopia, in Egypt. Yeah, yeah. No, not in Egypt, in Ethiopia. I was there last year, you know. I witnessed this, you know, and I, I feel very privileged, you know, mm. to God to have given me that chance to go to the Holy Land in Ethiopia, mm. to see the most ancient church mm. in Africa. In Africa. Which was built about 4,000 years ago. Mm. And it's believed that this church, men, they used to build it in the daytime and in the night. The angels they used to build because it's a rock. Hmm. It's a rock, yeah. From it's the a ground. rock which has been carved from the ground. Yeah, from the ground. Yeah, it's been carved into a church. Yeah, you know. So I, I feel very privileged, you know, for the Creator to have taken me to that land hmm. yeah. to see those holy places of His, those higher places of His. You know, hmm. you know. I was in a church where you have to go with a rock hmm. on top of the church. Hmm. You know, it's thirty feet high. Hmm. You know. So you have to climb, you know, it's right on the edge of the rock. So you have to climb to go inside the church, you know, up the rock, you see? And I did that, you know? And that's why that place is called Dabradamo. Mm, Dabradamo. Dabradamo. And there's Dabramakos, mm. you know, Dabralebanos is mm. the most ancient church. Mm. And the founder of that church is a, a Tekele Halmon, you know? He's the only human being who was by, granted by Creator hmm. to have wings like angel. Oh. And he said they stayed in a cave for 22 years. He was praying there, you know? And then when they were pulling it, him up, the rope, the leather which they were pulling, it trapped, you know? So he was gonna go back, fall on the cave, you know? But he had wings. So the wings supported him to come up out of the cave. And from the cave, he had to pray another seven years with one leg standing, ah. reading the Bible, you know? That was the founder of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, you know? <laughs> so he prayed seven years with one leg, and in the same front of him there were spears, and in behind him there were spears, so he couldn't bend fr front or backward, you know? No food, had, no water. No, no food, no water. And he had to, to pray and read the Bible for seven years, like that. 
They say he used to cry and birds they used to come and drink from his tears like water, you know. So this faith is not a, a fiction or imagination, you know. It's mm -hmm. a true reality, you know. So what we are trying to do as Rastas is to bring our people back to their roots, to show them there's black Jesus, and Jesus is a black man. The three wise men hmm. who followed to the star hmm. to where Jesus Christ was born hmm. was in Africa, hmm. you know? Because in Africa is where people, they live with sheep and goats, you know, around them, where Jesus Christ was born, you know? It was in the altar of cows, where cows they sleep, and, and that's where Jesus was born. Hmm. Where else we could be if it's not Africa? Yeah, it's Africa. It's Africa, man. Yeah. Oh. So let's bring back our people to Africa. I hope you found the Rasta community as exciting and uh, adventurous as I have. Please keep watching on Inside Africa. No.